Hi there. How are you doing today? Namaste, good morning, afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Vishnu Dutt and I work as a network architect in Cisco. In this video, we are going to discuss the second question of the series, which is how two computers talk when they are in same network. This is another interesting question because if you don't know the concepts involved when two computers talk inside a network, it is very difficult that you understand computer networking, which talks about connecting all the computers in the world, right? So we will stick to our plan. First, we will discuss about the intent of this question. Second, we will talk about the various concepts that will help us to answer this question effectively. Finally, we are going to discuss about the follow-up questions which an interviewer may ask when you finished answering this one. The interviewer's intent behind this question is to test your fundamental knowledge of networking. There is no point to discuss anything else if you do not know how two computers talk, correct? This question and related concepts are crucial for any networking job interview. Now let's answer this question and whiteboard the various concepts associated with it, okay? Consider this diagram. For now, please ignore these empty boxes. This one, this one, and also the tables because we will be filling them during this video. Here we have a single layer to switch, this one here. This is connected to two hosts. Host A here is connected to port number 0 slash 1 and host B, this one, is connected to port 0 slash 2, right? These cables are simple Ethernet cables. Here you can see, right? The IP address of the host A is 192.168.10.100/24, and its MAC address is A colon A colon A. Although the MAC address is of 48 bits, but for simplicity, I am just writing it as A colon A colon A. Okay. Similarly, the IP address of host B is 192.168.10.200/24, and B colon B colon B is the MAC address associated with it. What we need to understand here is how host A can communicate to host B. We are going to use ping utility to test the connectivity between these two hosts. Okay. So if you write ping 192.168.10.100 on host A. It will create an ICMP eco packet here, this one, with source address of 192.168.10.100 and destination address is 192.168.10.200 and send it towards host B. Although ping eco packet has some data also, but let's not go into too much details of ICMP ping. Host a then starts listening for ICMP eco reply from host B. If it gets the reply, it knows that there is no issue in the network and host B is reachable. But here is the thing. What exactly happens behind the scenes when host A sends the ping packet towards host B? Let's discuss this in detail. When host A generates the ping packet, it needs to route it towards host B. Yes, you heard it correctly. Routing starts from the host itself. As a first step, this host will check whether the destination address of the ping packet, that is 192.168.10.200, is part of its own network. Can it calculate this information? Yes, why not? Even we can calculate this. We have discussed this in last video of this series, correct? As you can see, we have mentioned the subnet mask slash 24 along with IP address through which this host A comes to know that host B is part of its own network, which is 192.168.10.0 slash 24. Correct? Very easy. If the destination address of the packet is in the same network, host A forwards this packet out of this Ethernet interface here, this one. But wait a minute. To send this packet over the Ethernet interface, host A needs to put the source and destination MAC address, correct? Don't worry, I will explain you why do we need MAC address along with IP address in one of the upcoming videos of the series. Let's continue with the discussion for now. So here is the new packet, this one. As you can see, 
this orange box represents the ping packet, this one, right? Because if I write the complete packet once again, it will make the things more cluttery. Hence, this orange box is equivalent to this ping packet. Okay, got it? Here I have put two green box to represent Ethernet frame. So till here we have Ethernet frame. The source address of this frame will be A colon A colon A. Correct? Here is the problem now. What will be the destination MAC address? This host doesn't know the destination MAC address. It means host A cannot complete this packet. And if this packet is not complete, it cannot go out of this Ethernet interface. Hence, host A keeps this packet into its memory and try to find the destination MAC address. So do you get the problem here? Yep, great. At this point, host A's primary goal is to find MAC address of host B. And yes, you got it right. Host A will use address resolution protocol or ARP to solve this problem. So let's discuss the ARP now. Address resolution protocol finds MAC address associated with corresponding IP address. As you know, the IP address of the host B is 192.168.10.200. So the ARP will find the MAC address associated with this host or host B. But how ARP does this? To start, host A creates an ARP packet and sends it to everyone in the network, or we can say broadcast the packet. This packet is known as ARP request and it's shown in yellow color here. So let's fill the content. ARP request packet consists of sender MAC, sender IP, target MAC, and target IP, right? Let's fill this packet. Sender MAC will be A colon A colon A. Sender IP will be 192.168.10.100. As ARP doesn't know the target MAC, it will put all zeros in this field here. Okay. And the target IP will be simple 192.168.10.200. Now, this ARP packet needs to be broadcasted to everyone in the layer 2 network. Host A place this R packet on this Ethernet interface. But wait a minute. If we need to send this R packet, host A needs to write the source and destination MAC address of the frame. Guys, don't be confused with packet and frame. At layer 3, the data unit is packet, and at Ethernet layer or layer 2, it is frame. So this is the frame here. Can you see this yellow box? This is the R packet here. I have shown this bigger R packet with the smaller one. Okay, correct. Let's write the full content. The source MAC address of this frame will be A colon A colon A, and the destination address will be yes, you got it right. All Fs or F colon F colon F. In Ethernet, F colon F colon F is known as broadcast address. Are you guys with me till now? Yep. By this time, you would have noticed that communication between two hosts is kind of a big puzzle, which we have divided into multiple parts. We are solving each part to solve the entire puzzle, right? Now it's time to check what happens when this broadcast frame reaches to the switch. We are presuming that this layer two switch is a brand new. When this ARP request packet reaches at zero slash one interface of the switch, being an intelligent device, it will start populating its database. So here is the database, this one here, which is also known as content addressable memory or CAM table. This table has three columns, that is VLAN, switch port, and MAC address. As this packet is reached to switch, switch knows A colon, A colon, A, MAC address is reachable over port number zero slash one. And it is simple because the frame with MAC address A colon A colon A is received on port number 0 slash 1. Okay. Hence, it will write 0 slash 1 in the port column here and A colon A colon A in MAC address column here. The meaning of this entry is simple. Through this entry, switch knows that MAC address A colon A colon A is reachable over 0 slash 1 interface. Right. 
switch builds its cam table on the basis of source mac addresses of the frames it receives as we are presuming the switch is new it will be having only one default vlan which is also known as vlan 1 all ports are assigned to vlan 1 by default hence in this column we will write vlan 1 okay are we good till this point now switch examines the destination mac address of the frame and comes to know that it is broadcast address or all f's switch forwards the packet based on destination mac address right when it sees all f's as destination mac address it will forward it on all the interfaces that are part of vlan 1 except the one on which it has received the packet as you can see interface 0 slash 2 is part of vlan 1 so switch will forward this packet on interface 0 slash 2 correct simple it will not forward the packet back to 0 slash 1 because this packet was received on this interface at the first place and there is no point of sending it back again make sense yeah so eventually our frame from host a will reach to host b here one important thing to note here is that this switch doesn't recreate the frame it just forwarded it based on destination mac address okay are you still with me this stuff is amazing isn't it every host that receives a broadcast frame must process the frame right so when host p receives the frame it processes it and removes the outer mac address to get the r packet in the target ip field of the ARP message host b finds its own ip address correct you can see the target ip here this one which is the ip address of host b hence this host comes to know that the arp message is destined to it and it must reply with the arp reply message so this host will create an arp reply message this message here and it is shown in yellow color let's fill the contents the sender mac will be b colon b colon b as this host is sending the arp reply message right sender ip will be 192.168.10.200 the target mac will be a colon a colon a and the target ip will be 192.168.10.100 here we just created the r reply message now if host b wants to send this packet over this wire this one it needs to write down the source and destination address of the frame as you can see the little yellow box represent our reply message right this is same as this message the bigger one correct these two green boxes represent layer 2 frame header so the source mac address of this frame will be b colon b colon b and the destination mac address will be a colon a colon a wait a minute can you tell me why the destination mac address is a colon a colon a and the reason is simple host b exactly knows where to send this frame uh, that carries our reply hence our reply message from host b will always be a unicast packet this is different to our request message which was sent as a broadcast when this ARP reply message reaches at switch, the switch will update its CAM table entry. So in port column, the value will be 0 slash 2. And here in the MAC address column, we can write B colon B colon B. Of course, the VLAN is going to be the default VLAN or VLAN number 1. The meaning of this entry is that MAC address B colon B colon B is reachable over 0 slash 2 port of the switch in vlan 1 correct this way switch will complete its cam table once it's update the cam table it looks into the destination mac address of the frame which is a colon a colon a and finds from its cam table that this mac address is reachable over 0 slash 1 interface this one hence it will forward the frame over 0 slash 1 interface now the frame will eventually reach at host a host a will processes the frame because it is destined to its mac address correct it will remove the frame header and get the r reply message the puzzle is solved 
host B can complete this frame here, this one, because now it knows the destination MAC address. This board has become cluttery now. Let's shift to somewhat cleaner. Here you go. I have removed some of the unnecessary drawings. As I mentioned, now host A can complete its frame that has a ping echo packet and will write destination MAC address as B colon B colon B. Once the frame is complete, it can be put onto the wire, this wire. This box is the IP packet. This is the source MAC address, which is A colon A colon A. And this is the destination MAC address or B colon B colon B. The ping packet will reach to switch. Switch will consult its CAM table and forwards it towards the 0 slash 2 interface. When the ping packet reaches host B here, it will reply with the ping reply packet. Here, this one. So this one is the ping reply packet having source MAC address of B colon B colon B and destination MAC address of A colon A colon A. When this ping reply message reaches to switch, the switch will forward it on 0 slash 1 interface after consulting with its CAM table. This way, host A and B can communicate inside the same network. Slightly long answer, but totally worth it, right? As a follow-up question, an interviewer can ask what happens when we replace the layer 2 switch, this switch, with the router. And we will exactly discuss this in our next video of this series. The above discussion also covers many networking fundamental questions like, can you explain R? Or how switch builds its CAM table? Or how switch forwards the frame? And many other such questions. And I'm sure now you can answer all these questions in detail, right? Isn't the whole process a mind-blowing experience, right? In this video, we have learned the concept of R, ICMP ping, VLANs to some extent, and CAM table, right? With this knowledge, we can easily answer the above question, right? We also discussed the various follow-up questions that an interviewer can ask. As you would have noticed that answering the follow-up questions become obvious and easy when you have entire concept in your pocket, right? In next video, we are going to discuss the third question of the series, which is how to computer stock when they are in different networks. Hope you have enjoyed this video. See you in next one. <music>